What's up YouTube, it is your boy JB and we are here today with a new review of Love at the Lockup. We're still on season three, this is episode 35. The episode was titled, Cheap Thrills and Big Deals. Well, if y'all got it, you didn't see that spit. All right, you guys, before we get into the review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel, and you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, why are we still going out on dates? Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button, hit that um, notification bell. And with that being said, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this episode, shall we? All right, you guys, so the first couple we're gonna talk about, I think his name is Dante and Nicole with two L's. Dante, I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. Dante looks like he is, um, how's a nice, what's the nicest way to say it? He looks like he has a, Nope, I'm not even going to say it. You can probably guess what I'm thinking. So we see Dante, and he's buying some wine for Nicole. So the guy's like, what kind of wine are you looking for? White wine, red wine. He says, oh, she wants some white wine, some red wine, and some pink wine. Well, she needs to get a job and get that for herself. So Dante tells us that he wanted to be married by the time he was 28, and he's 33 now. I'm like, 28? Why? But whatever. So then he says he can't stand a shallow and materialistic person. Well, he can't stand shallow and materialistic people. I was like, oh, okay. So we find out that Nicole, she was in, she's in prison for four years for robbery. Robbery. That doesn't, I mean, if that doesn't scream materialistic, you're selling other people's stuff. Materialistic. But okay, I'm gonna let him have it. So he and Nicole, they've been dating for a year and a half now, and they are currently engaged. Okay. He also lets us know that he has a high sex drive, and he bought one of those flesh toys, and I'm like, oh, good grief. I did not need to see that whatsoever. No part of me wanted to see that, him with that toy. And he's named it Nicole Jr. Ugh. So then he says that, you know, um... So then he also says that Nicole told him that she was never with a black man. I'm like, oh, so you're going to be her first Ebony Mandingo. Okay, cool. So it was at this point that I realized that Mr. Dante is a walking contradiction. So his friend Derek comes over and we see that Dante has bought Nicole some, he bought her a Michael Kors bag. He bought her some AirPods. He bought her an iPhone. And he's giving her $1,000 in cash. And I'm just like, hello, sir. That is material items there that you have. Michael Kors, Apple products. Those are all material items, but you don't like someone who's materialistic. What did I say? Contradiction. So then Derek says to him, like, you just bought your white girl. Basically, that's exactly what he did. So then we find out that his mom doesn't approve of Nicole. And I, can't, I couldn't stop looking at his mama's eyelashes because you could see the glue clumped onto her eyelashes. I'm like, lady, you might want to go a little less glue. So he tells his mama that he wants to set some ground rules when it comes to Nicole. I was like, oh, you setting some ground rules with your mama, your mama. So we also find out that Mr. Dante likes some white, blonde hair, big tits. His words, not mine. His last girlfriend that he was in a serious relationship was also an inmate. Her name was Chelsea, I believe. That's what he said. And it was in this moment that I realized Dante is not the brightest bulb in the box. Because when they were talking, his mom said that Dante had to move back in with her because he sent the last girlfriend his entire paycheck and he did not pay his rent. I was like, dude, you are really stupid. Why would you sit there and spend all your money on someone else and not pay your rent first? What kind of sense does that make? You are a for real fool. For real, for real. But let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. Next, we got somebody from Houston. I was like, oh, good God of hell. Brittany and Ray. So we see Brittany and she's out shopping for something to wear, you know, when she goes to get Ray. She's looking for something sexy for Ray. She said, particularly something with no panties on, with no panties. I was like, oh, depending on what time of year this was, well, Houston in Texas is hot in general, so I'm like, you're going to have a hot puss 
when you go to and see him. Kudos to you, girlfriend. So she said that, um, you know, she and Ray, they've been together for nine months at this point. And she met Ray through social media. So I couldn't I couldn't gather which social media site that was. I, I'm pretty positive it might have been Facebook. So he hit her up. She responded. And that's how they started talking to each other. Now, the thing that I noticed in this episode and with these people, because I don't think we've ever been told what dating site they've met people on. So I think we TV is finally listening to the fans and us reviewers who ask, where do y'all meet these people at? So we find out that Mr. Ray was sentenced to four years in prison for getting busted with narcotics. I was like, ooh, narcotics. My F buddy is in jail for being busted with narcotics as well. More specifically, crack cocaine. Never understand it. So hell, y'all might see me on the season of Love After Lockup. No, you won't, because we're not in love. We just have sex. It's just sex. That's all it is. Nothing but sex. Nothing but sex. So we also find out that um, Britney's family doesn't know about Ray at all. And then we also find out that Britney was in a previous relationship that, you know, she was abused. And when she called the cops on that ex-boyfriend, that ex-boyfriend went to prison. So I was looking at Britney. I'm like, you are very bougie. I can definitely see that. But your wig, it doesn't necessarily scream bougie because it got a little bit of a hump in it. And I'm like, yeah, your wig doesn't scream bougie, but you definitely scream bougie. And then when she took out her debit card, I was like, is that a chime card? No shade to anybody that has a chime card. But I'm like, that looks like a chime card because I know what chime cards look like because I know people who have them, you know, they're white. And no shade to anybody who has a chime card. But just looking at Britney, you wouldn't expect her to have a chime card. You would expect her to have the way she looks, the way she's presenting herself. You would think she'd have American Express. Um, visa, you know, something high, you know, something with a, a big value on it, not a chime card. Again, no disrespect to anybody that has one. I just noticed that about Brittany. Um, ooh, let's move on. Rachel and Doug are up next. Rachel is better than me. So when we first saw Rachel, I thought that the little boy that she was talking to was her son, she, I think she asked him, like, was he okay or something? He said, stop asking me that. I was like, oh, who in the hell does he think he's talking to? Like, look, like, lady, if you don't go in there and go upside his head, like, he's talking to you out the side of his neck. So, she was in the Marine Corps. Her friends come over. So, then we find out that she tells us, I don't know why we need to know this, but she said that she likes it rough. I was like, Rachel, I didn't need to know that either. So she's known Doug for a year and a half. He's in jail for felony firearms. Basically, Doug is a career criminal. And we also find out that Miss Rachel was with two criminals before him. So she thinks that third time is the charm. I was like, oh, okay. So she also says that, you know, she and Doug, they're married. They've been married for four months. But I think they may have dated for a few months before they were. At the time that they got married, I think they were together for 10 months. I think that's what she said. Then she said they have not consecrated their marriage. I was like, it's not consecrated, baby. It's consummate. Say it with me. Consummate. Then she told us she gave him hand jobs in prison. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> y'all tell all y'all business on this show. Y'all will leave nothing to the imagination. So we find out that the little boy that was in, that's in her house is Dougie. That's his son. I was like, little Dougie would be with somebody else, his mama, his grandmother, his grandparents, someone, but it wouldn't be with me. So, Big Doug calls her. Big Doug is controlling as crap, and he's an asshole, and she thinks it's cute. I was like, girl, absolutely not. You think that that's cute, that this man is controlling? Like, I was confused. How do you find that cute? But I know one thing, Satan Spawn would have to go. Satan spawn would have to go somewhere. He wouldn't be in my house. So what happened is prior to the pandemic, she would have him. What did she say? Once a week? Well, well, every other weekend or something like that. But after the pandemic, she got him long term. And also his mother has a drug addiction. OK, he doesn't have a grandmother or grandfather on both sides of his family. Like the hill. So then she asked him, like, what are you going to do when daddy comes home? He says, I'm going to punch him in the stomach. And I'm going to call him a douche for not, you know, taking care of his kid. I'm like, okay. 
that makes sense. We also find out that Little Dougie is 12 years old. And I'm like, ooh. Ooh, okay. Okay. I know Little Dougie got a smart mouth for a 12 year old. Little Dougie would have got checked, chin checked, everything checked. Just being real with you. I would have checked Little Dougie. But let's move on. All right, you guys. Next, let's talk about Courtney and Josh. So, Courtney, very interesting story. Courtney, she's 30 years old, right? This, she's married to Josh. She's told us that this is her third marriage. I'm like, you're 30 years old. This is your third marriage. How old were you when you got married the first time? And how long did the first marriage last? And how long did the second marriage last? I mean, 30 years old? And you've had been on three? You have had three marriages? Girl, maybe it's not for you. So then she tells us that she met Josh when she was a corrections... What did she say? I want to get the... I guess she was a CEO. So, Josh has been in jail since he was 18 for burglary. So, another Quaylon, Quaylan, huh? Cool. So, she said that, you know, when she worked at the prison, you know, she um, went into his cell. She found some letters that he wrote, and the letters were like, you know, he didn't feel that, you know, what did she say? His word, his, um, about his feeling, him feeling alone, not feeling like he fit in with anybody. I'm glad he didn't kill himself just saying and she said that those notes spoke to her really that says a lot about you love just saying says a lot about who you are as a person that those letters about not feeling like he fit in and he felt alone spoke to you are you trying to tell us something that I mean are y'all two depressed people y'all might want to go seek therapy and fast so they got six they got married six months after dating right so we also find out that josh was denied parole at her house because she's on probation <laughs> and i was thinking about that when she said that you know she dated him she was with him while she was a co i know that when it comes to the co's they cannot they they're not allowed i mean they can't really date or talk to or have sex with the prisoners I mean, you guys remember Orange is the New Black, um, season one, when what's his name slept with uh, Daya and got Daya pregnant, and they were trying to figure out who the father was. And isn't that a felony? Because isn't that like considered rape? Let me know in the comment section. So, yeah, so she got sent at the. Sh Here's what was funny to me. So. Rachel told us that for eight weeks, she would go to visit Josh, right? She would wear a different wig each time. I'm like, a different wig? You, you wore a different wig. A wig. A wig. How dumb are the people in the prison system? Like, how dumb are the people who work there? Like, they didn't realize that you were wearing a wig? And they can't, they don't know what you, okay. She wore a wig. She got away with it for eight weeks, and then after that, she got fired, and she served 60 days in jail, and she is now on probation for two years. So that is one of the reasons why Josh cannot come and stay with her. Now, he can come in quarantine with her for, you know, two weeks, but after that, he can't stay with her. <clears throat> so then we see Courtney. She's going to pick up Josh. Now, she has to have her friend with her because she's not allowed on her, on her property. So she tells us that she is picking Josh up in a pickle costume. Ooh, excuse me, I didn't mean to break me off face. And the reason that she's picking him up in a pickle costume is because of this picture that they found that they laughed at, which was really corny. The picture says something of, to the effects of, it's a big deal, D-I-L-L. -L. I was like, okay, not funny. Here's another, t another dumb dumb. So, Rachel lets us know that she spent $25,000 on Mr. What's his name again? Josh. She even at one point went without hot water. No, hot water and her hot water heater went out. She didn't get it fixed because of him. I'm like, girl, you are really dumb. Like, what is it with y'all? First, it was Dante who didn't pay his rent. Now you going without hot water? Girl, 
I know you can put I know you can put cold I mean I'm country we've done it before I know you can put cold water in a pot and boil it and you have hot water but that takes a while why would you deliberately go without hot water make that make sense ridiculous let's move on to the last person who I don't know if that's a wig on his head or what but it's trash but let's move on all right you guys so to wrap the episode up let's talk about Stan and Lisa Stan what the hell is that on your head it is horrendous so Stan is 65 years old he looks older than that just being real with you guys Stan look older than 65 so Stan is a widower and he tells us that he doesn't want to be alone which I get that nobody wants to be alone and then you know he's from what it sounded like Stan has been with other women prior to Lisa so he tells us that his his, his net worth is about 2.3 million I said use a lie a lie I don't care who tell it not with this on um, whatever this is that was on your head it screams thrift store so Stan he met Lisa on seeking arrangements I was like oh it makes sense sugar daddy sugar baby I've been on seeking arrangements before that site is really creepy to me like I had someone reach out to me and it was just a creepiest situation so I actually stopped using it because I was like ooh I'm like JB you're not desperate for money I mean you just like to have extra money that's you know non-taxed and not yours but can you sleep with someone that looks like the Crypt Keeper? When I told myself, absolutely not, I cannot sleep with someone that looks like the Crypt Keeper, I said, you know what? We're going to move on. I'd rather do OnlyFans than, I, than to do Seeking Arrangement. Now, unless, you know, unless, unless you have, you know, a nice physique, you know, <sighs> ooh, I don't want to see no excess skin hanging, ooh. That's what it is for me. It's just the excess skin. When, you, when you, I know as we get older, the, the skin loses its elasticity. I get that, but baby, I don't want to see it. I don't want to be in bed and we having sex and you just flapping everywhere. Like, it's one thing if you if you just you know a little you know thick and full. That's one thing. I'm cool with that. But excess skin, just flapping in the wind. No. Absolutely not. So then one of his, his friends asked him the question of, does he think that this is a, a sugar baby situation? Yes, it is. She was on seeking arrangements. It is 1000% a sugar baby, sugar daddy situation. Why y'all asking this question? So then we find out that Lisa was a drug dealer. Hell, she looks like she's also on the drugs as well. Just keeping it real, call, you know, shame the devil, tell the truth and shame the devil. She looks like she's on the drugs as well. Just saying, from some of those pictures that they show, Lisa looked like she has dabbled in a little bit of crack and a little bit of meth. It is what it is. But that's it, you guys. The first episode was good. Um, oh, Life After Lockup. They told us in the, one of the commercial breaks that that returns in uh, August. You know, I saw Puppy and Amber. Oh, God, I got to talk about them again. Puppy and Amber. Lacey, Shane, and John. Didn't see John, just saw Lacey and Shane, Christiana and Christiana and John. Oh God, we gotta look at those two again. Look like they got remarried, and that dress that Christiana had on was an absolute no. It looked like a disco ball. But yeah, you guys, we're gonna have a good time with this season and then life after lockup in August. Oh God, they're gonna do what they did last year. I know what they're gonna do. They're gonna do what they did last season. You guys remember? At, actually was it yep it was last summer when they did it they showed us you know the first half of season of the last season of Life After Lockup with Quaylon, Quaylin, Chevelle um Sean and Destiny we saw we saw Destiny we saw Sean's whack ass Sean is an idiot don't want to see Sean again I think that's all we saw in the, in the preview was Sean Look like you got a new girlfriend. Mm. Hopefully in his kid's life. But yeah, you guys, that's what life after, love after lockup, actually. So yeah, that's what they're going to do. They're going to give us love after lockup, then life after lockup, then love after lockup. This half will wrap up, and then we'll wrap up the other half. 
why is it still season three? I just don't get it. Why is it still season three? So will season four not come until next year? That's it, you guys. Like this video. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware when I drop anything else and share this video. Until the next one, stay safe, you guys. Take care of yourselves. Remember, wash your hands. Wear your mask. If you choose not to wear your mask, be safe in whatever you do. Socially distance and be blessed, you guys. And I'll catch you guys later for um, Ready to Love. All right, you guys. I'm off. Bye. Yeah, this will turn off.